that's a pretty good clap for me, but can you give the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Come on, you can do better than that. Give God some praise. Hey, come on, give God some praise. Hey, come on, if he's rescued your life, give God some praise. If he's brought you from a mighty long way, give God some praise. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 come on, give God some praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. your hands all over the building my response my response is forever, forever and ever and my song Pastoral team, can you gather around this incredible couple? My response is. your neighbor and say, and I'm never, I'm never hey, going come on, scream it to the devil knows, and I'm never, I'm never going let the enemy know that he's lost, and I'm never, Stretch your hands toward this powerful couple. Not only are they my brother and sister in the faith, but we have very quickly grown to be family. And you can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. And it's, it is appropriate that I'm here during Pastor Appreciation Month and the greatest gift that you could ever give to your pastors is not just your faithfulness, not just your service, not just the giving of your time, your talent, and your treasure, but the greatest gift that you could ever give to them is the gift of your prayers. And so right here in this prophetic moment, I want you to open your mouth if you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Come on, shift the room right now. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh anointing, fresh power. Come on, come on. Pray, 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 
out of your belly would flow rivers of living water. Now pray in English. Pray in English. Pray in English. Pray in the spirit, but in English. We cover them now. We release some grace upon them now. We cover them now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. We cover Avery. We cover Zanel. We cover Samara. We cover Charisma. We cover Apostle Sonny, Arkansas. We cover this house right now. We build a wall of fire. We build a wall of fire. We build a wall of fire. 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 And so, Father, in this sacred prophetic moment, as an army of intercessors, as an army of prayer warriors, we cover this, your son and your daughter, from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. We pronounce abundant blessings over their lives. You have decreed some things over their lives. Come on, somebody say, you decreed it. Come on, say, he decreed it. He decreed over their lives that they'll be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. He decreed over their lives that their latter days will be greater than their former days. He decreed over their lives that their children's children, children, children children will be blessed hey so so he decreed it and now we declare it come on say he decreed it now we declare it we declare the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob upon them right now. He decreed it, we declare it, and it is so. Now give God some praise in this house. Whoa. Somebody shout with me, he decreed it. We declare it. It is so. Can you hug your brother and sister? Hug your brother and sister and just as you're making your way down your seat. Hey. Oh yeah, this is good. Yeah. This must be pastor's mic. This is anointed. Don't, don't change it. Don't change it. I'll, I'll work with it. Trust me. Hey. Yeah, the anointing's in this mic. Yay. Can you look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you came to church today. Tell your neighbor, if you didn't come to church, come on, say, if you didn't come to church, I'd be the best looking person in this room. But decided to come to the house of the Lord and, and so I'll, I'll take second place just for today my dear brother and my friend and I honor you and I thank you for your your life and your ministry and the anointing that's upon your life I have so much to say but I know that this will not be my last time here. And we 
have a few services together. 11 and I promise you, if you can get to the night service tonight, I've been praying since 3 o'clock this morning about what God wants to say to us. I believe that I'm here on prophetic assignment. I'm not here to preach. I'm here to decree and declare. I'm here to decree and declare that heaven will invade San Diego. I'm here to decree and declare what Isaiah prophesied. Oh, that you rend the heavens open and come down to San Diego and do something supernatural. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Increase power. Miracles. Turn to your neighbor and say, that is your portion. You can be seated. Turn with me in your Bible. really quick to Matthew chapter number 18. Matthew chapter number 18. If you have it, say amen. If you need some more time, say, hold on, Pastor Man. Uh-huh. I only have 20 minutes, so we got to move. Pray this simple prayer with me. Say, dear Lord, open my eyes and stop my ears. Prepare my heart to receive a word from you. I'll never be the same again. Because of your word, in Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter 18, verse number 19. Again, I tell you, if two of you, you can stay with me. If two of you on the earth agree about anything, someone say anything. It will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name. Someone say, in my name. Not the name of Thompson, but in the name of Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Nisi, my banner. Jehovah Shalom, my peace. Jehovah Sabaoth, the very present help. Jehovah Sabaoth, the one who fights for me. Jehovah Shama. For if two or three gather in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The title of my message this morning is One Voice. Turn your neighbor and say, One Voice. One Voice, Many Voices. One Church, Many Churches. One body, many parts. This is the year where the body of Christ unites together as one. And we speak and we decree and declare and we pray the prayer that Isaiah prayed and Isaiah 56, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And so in this prophetic moment, just play chords, just play chords. In this prophetic moment, we align with the decrees from heaven. That heaven would invade the earth. That there would be a power that will shift every single place where our feet tread.
I've been sharing with your pastor, and I've been, I, I said to him on several occasions that the enemy is not, a, is not afraid of a big church. The enemy is not afraid of a growing church. The enemy is not afraid of a church that has campuses on every block. You know what the enemy is afraid of? The enemy is afraid of a praying church. The enemy is afraid of a church that will really understand what 2 Chronicles is talking about. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek the face of God. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. Hear me? I'm not here to preach the most eloquent message. I'm here to stir up someone in this room to recognize that we are the church, that we are the house of prayer, that we are the people that need to seek his face. Then will he hear from heaven, forgive our sins. And I don't know about you, San Diego, but I'm praying that he will heal our land. Our land is sick and he's looking for an ambassador on the earth that will pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it, on earth as it is in heaven. He's looking for a people that will read his word and understand what he has decreed so that you can declare and you can step on the enemy's head and say, it is so. There is a dream that God has for San Diego. And you are a part of that dream. There's an assignment that you have to ask the Lord, Lord, what is your dream? What is your purpose? What have you called for me to do in this season of my life? And if God has a dream for Victory Outreach and for San Diego, you better believe that the enemy has an, a plan as well. I pastor a very large church. We're a crazy church like y'all. <laughs> we worship that song we just sang. My response is adoration. That was written right in our church by my younger brother who wrote the song, My Worship. And there are times, Algie, where people will come to the altar and they're, they're praying, they're praying, Aldo, they're asking me, Pastor, can you pray that the enemy will leave me alone? I said, what are you talking about? You, you know, Victory World Outreach Church, you know when you're going in the right direction, when you come up against opposition with the devil. If you never face any adversities, it means that the enemy is happy with the direction that you are going. I'm here to let you know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is sounding an alarm. One voice in heaven looking for a people that will agree with his voice and say, Thy kingdom come! Uh, I've had to turn people away, brother, and say, I can't pray that prayer for you. 
Because the enemy's job is to try to kill you, steal from you, destroy you. But that's not the end of the story. Jesus Christ steps on the scene. humanity he steps on the scene and says but I've come that you might have life and have life more abundantly are there any saved sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost fire baptized prayer warring family that know that the enemy comes at you one way but he has to flee seven ways the enemy tries to stop your praise the enemy tries to stop you from praying the enemy's trying to get you to be quiet and to be silent but i'll become even more undignified than this and as long as i am breathing question whose voice <laughs> Jesus I know but who are you victory the Lord has sent me here on assignment to remind you that you are here to take back territory. To take back what the enemy has stolen from you. See, but the enemy wants you to remain solo. He wants our churches to remain in competition, in silos. He doesn't want partnership. He doesn't want you to find your, your tribe and to be connected with a brother that is on the other side of the world and when you connect you realize wow there is a DNA there is a synergy there is an anointing because if one can chase a thousand and two can put ten thousand to flight I wonder what two churches can do when we unite together and we take back territory we take back what the enemy has stolen from you I don't know about you but I want it all. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're in a fight. The enemy is happy the territory he has taken from your family. He's excited about your depression. And as long as you stay depressed, he'll leave you alone. But as soon as you step into an anointed atmosphere like Victory Outreach San Diego, in that moment you must understand that you are taking territory back from the enemy that he's been very comfortable with allowing you to stay right where you are. But I'm here to let somebody know that the devil is a liar and his mother-in-law. I'm here to serve notice to every demonic assignment, every demonic imp, every demonic attack that you have to take your hands off my family, off my church, off my city, and we are going to cry with one voice. One church, many churches. One body, many parts. It's 
so you've left your door open and a lion has crept into your house and he's taken residence in your man cave brothers does every good man good father good husband deserves a man cave can I get an amen brothers can I get a boom shakalaka can I get a under the double cash under the basic kind of now uh, a man cave my brother is just a sliver of a room it's like you got to get in that room sideways you know what I'm saying? I mean, we got this beautiful house in Canton Massachusetts and my wife is oh she's fine <laughs> We've been married for 23 years, and we, and we still together. She's my love. She's my bae. She's my girl. She's my girlfriend. She's my only one. And I know that I would not be standing here if not for her prayers and her agreement. With all that said, she gave me a sliver of a room. <laughs> 5,500 square feet of a house that she can design and do her thing. And she gives me about 150 square feet. Just a sliver of, in the lower, not the basement, lower level. See, once you get really, you know, in another tax bracket, they don't call it the basement. They call it the lower level. Come meet me down at the lower level. So she gave me this little room in the lower level. And I said, I can design it how I want to design it. And she said, yes. So I ripped the carpet up. It has concrete floors. I love concrete floors. I painted the room black. I got four really comfortable chairs. Got a 70-inch TV. Built the surround sound in the room. I can close the door. And, you know, after all that, she came walking in like, hmm. Don't you think we should just put a little plant in here? little rug here? I'm like, you have the whole house. But imagine you've left the door open and the enemy has snuck into your house, into your life, and he is in the room that you occupy the most. And one day you walk in that room, you're like, oh, I'm lying in there. Depression has snuck into your house. Rebellion has snuck into your children. Complacency has snuck into your church. The enemy has snuck in and he has stolen something that belongs to you. Do you think that you're just going to be able to walk in there by yourself? And say, hey, lion, get out. He's going to be like, who said? The enemy wants you to stay solo. He wants you to remain independent. The enemy does not want you to know that when you gather with the house of prayer, when you gather with people of like precious faith, that you have a greater power to go into every demonic, every demonic place, every demonic 
room, every demonic city, every demonic attack, and with your brothers, and with your family, and with your friends, and with your prayer warriors, you can say, no, 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 Mr. Temple, I got my brother here with me. If one can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. I think I need some other brothers here because I need some reinforcements. And as we pray, and as we seek the face of God, devil, you gotta leave. You gotta leave San Diego. You gotta leave my family. You gotta leave my church. You have to leave this nation. You have to leave my house. One voice. Many voices. One body. Many parts. One song. Different singers. Alto, the tenor, soprano. All uniting together. What has the enemy stole from you? You've tried to do it on your own because there's a curse that the enemy has released upon the earth. It's the curse of independence. That's what happened in the Garden of Eden. The enemy said, if you eat of this tree, You'll be like God. You won't need him. You can be independent of him. And from that moment until now, our children have been running after a curse of independence. Can't wait till I'm 18. I can't wait till I get to college. Can't wait till I do my own thing. Can't wait till I can make my own decision. Independence is a curse. No. You have been created as dependent beings. One voice. Jesus. That was my intro. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm preaching a different message at the 11 o'clock. It's a message that if you can't stay, you've got to You've got to get the CD or watch on live stream. And then you've got to get back here tonight. But while every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you're here in this room, my response, if you're here in this room, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need it right now. If you're in this room and you have never prayed the prayer of salvation, I've been praying since 3 o'clock this morning, praying that just one person would come to son, somebody's daughter, somebody's mother, somebody's father. While your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, and there are no distractions in this room right now because right now we are doing warfare in the heavens. If you've never prayed the prayer of salvation, and hear me, if you died today, you do not know where you would spend eternity. If anyone ever tells you that heaven is not real, they do not love you. Or that hell does not exist, they hate you. Because you will live forever. Your soul will live forever. Either in heaven with God or in hell with Satan. And so if you died today, you walked out of this church and you got hit by a car and you died and you do not know where you spend eternity I gotta pray with you I, I gotta I gotta pray for you just raise your hand just raise your hand I see that hand my sister my daughter my brother I see that hand all over the building I see that hand he's come to seek and to save those that are lost I'm not speaking in my own power I'm speaking with the voice of the king you can put your hand down I don't want your hand to get tired if you're here and you used to be saved, but you fell away, you've fallen away from the ways of the Lord, 
but you want to come back. The enemy will tell you that you've made too many mistakes and that you'll never be forgiven, but he's a liar and he's the father of lies. No, <laughs> he wants you to come back home. And if you're in a backslidden position and you want to come back home, raise your hand. I want to pray with you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my son. Last question. Perhaps you are confused and you need salvation assurance. You've heard of many people telling you that there are many ways to God and you have believed them. But you want to know that he's the only way. If that's you, raise your hand. I want to pray with you. If you've lifted your hand for prayer on any three of those invitations, stand to your feet right now. Thank you. Just stand. Don't worry about anyone else that's looking around. Heaven is responding right now to your stand of faith. And now I'm going to take you to, I'm going to ask you for those that are standing, look at me. I'm going to ask you to take another step of faith. It's very important. It's a step of faith that I took over 30 plus years ago. Even though I grew up in church, I was a PK. I still did wrong, even though I knew right. I knew right. I want to alter. I want to pray with you quickly. Don't clap yet, church, please. Just come right down. Just come right here. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Now, now, intercessors and prayer warriors, this moment right here is the most important moment in the entire service. Hear me. Please, hear me. There's someone here that you are afraid to raise your hand. Or perhaps you were afraid to stand. And I'm here to let you know that God is a God of second chances. Somebody waited for me and prayed for me. There are some of you in this room.